Hello there, YouTube. Don't mind the mess behind me. I thrive in chaos. So please just ignore that. I'll, maybe I'll try and blur it out in the, in the video. So, thanks so much for coming today. We are going to be doing our background block today for our February block of the month. This is the 2024 Raw Edge Applique Slow Stitched Floral Block of the Month. And this is the February block and it is going to be tulips. We are not doing the tulips today. We are just doing the background block. And I have a quick look-see of it here for you. And next time we'll be using this amazing tulip fabric to cut out tulips for our background. In this video, we're doing the February block and we will only be doing the background. And this way I will be able to give you a little bit more of an in-depth process on how I put these blocks together. In this series, I am going for a more muted background. So a, a softer color palette. And I find that these Indian block prints that I've got really fit that bill really nicely. So I'm going to be taking pieces of this and it's also very, very thin and easy to sew through even in layers. And again, I have a piece of my tablecloth and I have the hiccups. And I have some laces here that I'm going to play with. I do have more of these Indian fabrics if I decide that I want, like this piece here just screams out at me. And if you want it slightly more muted, this is the right side. You can choose the back side and that will give you a more muted color. I am going to have a bit of a play with laying these out and I will be cutting these down and they don't have to be square. They don't have to have straight edges. They can be anything you want. If you want the frayed edge look, you can snip with your scissors and then tear and that gives you a nice frayed edge and I really like that. And that could actually be some vegetation in the background, but that will be the next layer. And this does not have to stay a rectangle. You can cut any shape you want. Again, this is a lace tablecloth that I got at the thrift store. It is perfect for this. You get a lot of lace and you can just use the elements that you like. And for a block series like this, it works well because you get enough for the entire series if you're trying to keep the blocks cohesive. And again, you don't necessarily want to take any of your special pieces and put them so far on the edge that you end up losing them when you trim the blocks down. My January block did get taken up quite a bit. I'm not cutting these down at all until the very end, and then I will trim them to the smallest size. So if I had a really gorgeous piece of antique lace here, and it was only this wide, I wouldn't want to put it on the edge because then it would disappear. I kind of like that. I love this lace. I love that. That is just so pretty. And I have some of this blue stuff that I really like. There, I kind of like that. I think I'll just overlap that a wee bit. And now I have antique stuff here. And this has not even been opened. I love the soft color. I like that. So now if you go into thrift stores, look in the area that has sewing machines, because a lot of times they have craft supplies like these in that area. And this piece doesn't have to go straight and it doesn't have to be ironed if it's tucked in like that. And if you have a lot of scraps that are similar, then you might want to remember them for each block. This way, again, you have continuity between the blocks. There we go. Now I'm kind of happy with that. I think I'm gonna use this thread. Again, this is Wonderfill and it is pearl cotton. And I'm going to use one of my sashiko needles. Now comes the task of just sewing this down. And this is where we're going to be doing our slow stitching. To make my knot, I'm pinching the end on the needle and I'm wrapping. You can wrap, I would say, three times and just pulling. And then you have a nice little knot. I am going to start right here in this corner and I'm going to take some vertical stitches. 
And then I'm going down here. And you can be neater with the with the stitches if you prefer. I'm just, I am not being overly precise. This is gonna be in the background. So I wanted to come back and just mention that you don't want to pull tight on these stitches, otherwise the seam will pucker and you'll get a little speed bump along here. And you of course can do blanket stitch, you can do anything you like. I'm just trying to do a variety of stitches to give you ideas for your own blocks. So I wanted to come back and I wanted to show you what's happening here. I was holding this up and merrily stitching and I wasn't pulling hard, but as you can see, we have a pucker. And that is no bueno. So what am I doing? I'm pulling out the stitches and I'm gonna do it again and make sure we don't have any puckers. I have this piece all sewn down. Pick it up for you so you can see. The stitches are not perfect, they're just fun and that's what counts. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to do running stitches just to fill this piece in. And you can see that there is a bit of a pucker here and I'm okay with that. I'm just gonna give it a really good steam on my wool mat and then I will probably block it on the wool mat as well. And just try and avoid as much as possible as you can. If it happens, it happens. And that's, that's fine, that's fine. So if your blocks are smaller, they're a little bit smaller. That's okay. Again, I don't make, I don't necessarily plan a quilt to have precise measurements. I make a quilt in the design that my heart wants at whatever size my heart says, yep, that's good. And then the quilt ends up being whatever size it is. And I'm always, I'm more than happy with that. It could be roughly baby quilt size. It could be roughly, sofa size, or it can be a wall quilt that could be absolutely any size. So enjoy the process, have fun with these running stitches, and I will see you back when I have this piece done. I wanted to come back and show you how I make my, how I tie off my end. I don't, I'm not trying to use a lot of knots. When I start, I have a knot, but at the end, I like to weave the needle through the batting and if there's multiple layers of fabric, then through the lower levels of, of fabric. And I, I run it through that way. And then I come back and go right over and pierce the strand that I just ran. And I go back through a second time. And then I'd go one more time in the opposite direction again. And I pierce the thread again. And this way it's locked in. And I don't pull it tight and I just cut it that way and that way you reduce bumps. Here is this piece and I'm quite happy with the level of stitching in that. And I think I'm going to do this piece next. And I'm going to take my stitching cues from this dark red outline. I really like that. So I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take some of this variegated Wonder Fill and I'm just going to run it along these outlined stitches and that will get that piece down. And I will straighten it up and tuck it underneath the lace here. This bottom piece will get sewn down when I secure the lace. I am going to do a blanket stitch around this piece up to but not including the lace. So to start the blanket stitch, this is not gonna be a full stitch, but you're going to come up at the top of your stitch and then you're going to go down diagonally to the base of your next stitch and they can be as far apart or as close as together as you want but I'm going to have about an imaginary baseline of about a quarter of an inch inside this piece of fabric and I'm coming out just at the top of this piece of fabric to secure the edge down and I'm coming straight up and that will be the top of my stitch and I'm wrapping the thread around and now I am going like that. Now, if you don't like this piece right here without a stitch, you can just do a straight stitch here and that will finish it off. So now I'm gonna show you how to do the next stitch. So the next stitch will be however far apart you want your stitch at the base and you're coming straight up at the top and you're catching the loop of the thread. And again, you're, this is a stitch that will pucker if you pull it tightly, so you're not pulling it tight. You're just snugging it up. And that 
is how you do the blanket stitch. And let me get up to the corner here and I'll show you how to work the corner. So I'm hitting the corner at this point. I'm going down at the base of my next stitch and I'm coming up as usual, making the loop and catching it. And now I'm coming down at the base of the same stitch and I'm coming up at the corner. And now I'm going to go down at the same spot and come up at the next edge. Again, catching that loop. And there, I've turned my corner. I have the blanket stitch all done. Now I am just going to do running stitches in the outline of this red dashed line that goes around everything. And once again, I'm not pulling tightly. I'm kind of stretching it out and then just snugging it down until it's flat. You can do running stitches or you can do stab stitch, whatever's easier for you. You probably won't even be able to see these stitches. I guess you can, yes. And now I'm going to do this line here and then I'm going to come out and I think I will follow the lines out here in the lace and go right over it and then just go around all of that and uh, and here I might do some French knots. So I'm just going to enjoy myself with the outline stitch and when I have a little bit more to show you I will come back. I have done all of the outline stitches around these flowers and I like the way it looks. I love the little little puckering that happens like in an old quilt when you pick it up and it's it's got puckers in it. Not terrible puckers but just the little texture from the stitches going in and out. I just love that. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to make some French knots for these little spots here. I've come up where I want the base of my French knot and I'm taking my thread and I'm wrapping it around my needle and I'm going to do three times. I go back down right close to where I was, where I came up, and I'm holding the thread there so it doesn't untangle. And I'm gently pulling through and there is your French knot. I've picked some colors that I was going to use and these are six strand embroidery floss and I wanted to show you this bag. Now this bag has been used a lot so there's probably 50 to 100 skeins that have already come out of here. If you want some embroidery floss this has good ratings. It is on Amazon and customers seem to like it. They say that the colors don't run and they're pretty light fast but as with any textile art it should not be exposed to bright light because light will bleach it and it will degrade the fabric and the strength. This is 474 colors of, of good Egyptian cotton and it matches all the DMC colors. The labels do have co color numbers on them and if you're interested in that it was very very economical and I got it on Amazon and if you go down to the video description you will find the link to my Amazon store. My Amazon store will have just about everything I use. It will have links to all of these wonderful pearl cottons. It will have links to these embroidery flosses. It will have links to these quilting clips. It'll have a link to the tulip needles that I'm using. I think I may just do random plus signs or X's on this piece. And this one, I'm not sure what I'm going to do either. I may just do some lines. I'm going to use this embroidery floss for this piece of fabric. And I am going to split it into three strands. And I have a little knot on the back and I am just going to make X's all over the place. And I am not going to worry about the edges of this fabric. I like the look of raw edge applique. I like when like a rag quilt. I'm starting in one corner of my X and going diagonally down and then moving on to the next stitch and continuing in that fashion. And now I will cross the, the cross the plus sign. So I'll go this away. 
and just make little tiny cross stitches. I have finished this piece and I just did very wonky little crosses and I wanted to come back and show you something. I can see that I have a bit of pucker here. This kind of got scooched this way as I was sewing and I wanted to show you how to fix that if you've run into that because you don't want a big, you don't want a big you know, fold over like that. What you do is you look for a piece that's going to get covered by something else and you make a, di a dart or, well, I don't know, the opposite of what a dart would be. And that way it'll lay down nice and flat. And this also is not sewn down. That can be straightened out there too. But now that is nice and flat. And yes, this is crooked and I'm perfectly okay with that because my tulips won't all be straight either. And I also have to do the background. Now you have to, you have to kind of even out all of the stitching. So you can see that it's a little bit wavy here and that's because there's stitches that are kind of sucking in the fabric. So you need to balance that out and the fabric will return to flat once you fill in these background spaces with some stitches. And remember, this is a lot of this is gonna get covered. It's okay if some of your stitches get covered and you don't have to use the real fancy stuff if you have a limited supply of threads. So I wanted to come back and give you an update on where I am with my background. And I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it on the camera or not but the block is quite wavy over here and a little bit over here and i wanted to show you the difference this is wavy and this is really nice and flat i have decided to do kind of a baptist fan rainbows all over all over the block and it is flattening out the block so nice let's see if i can show you this ripple you see that ripple there that's nice and flat there and i'll show you the stitches here is the background for our February block. And again, the February block is going to be tulips. And I found this delightful tulip fabric that I will be cutting up and putting in the background for flowers in the distance. And I just wanted to give you a little bit of a close up on, of the block. So you can see the stitching. I didn't do anything elaborate, didn't do anything fancy. You should gather up your lace bits and your fabric bits and anything else that you want to add and you should get it all sewn down and in the next video that we do we will be doing the background I mean I'm sorry we will be doing the tulips now I have this delightful sequined trim here that I really like and I'm I really like the way the color looks, so I may I may couch some of that down. I hope you had fun. I hope you learned a little bit. And on our next video, we will be doing the grasses, the leaves, and the background tulips, and then we'll be doing our 3D tulips. I am so enjoying this series. It's just bringing my creativity overwhelming. I'm just so excited with it, and I'm, I'm so excited about thinking of ways to make the 3D flowers and I hope that you are enjoying the series along with me. So I want to thank you all so very much for watching and for clicking that subscribe button and clicking that thumbs up button and leaving a kind comment down below. Again, if you are looking for supplies, my Amazon store is linked in the description below the video and you can get the pearl cottons, you can get the embroidery flosses and the needles and anything else that you need. So go check that out and I will see you next time with our 3D finished block for February. So thanks so much for watching. I will talk to you real soon. I love you all very, very much. God bless. Good night, Elizabeth. Good night, Campbell.